Hi again. So, and welcome to this uh, custom IP part two. In the first part, we created the skeleton for our custom IP core. And in this part, we will look at implementing the functionality we want it uh, to hold. We have two files at first we need to, to make changes to. It's this uh, custom IP.vsdl, it, 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 it has the name of your IP core. So whatever you call it would be the name .vhd. Uh, and in this file you need to change the port declaration in order to implement the port that you need to the external world. And you need to do a port mapping to initialize uh, your user logic file, which comes down here. So we'll start by, by doing the changes to the custom IP core. So to the custom IP VHD file, um, and we have to go find it here. So we go file and we go open, and then within the project directory where your entire XPS project is stored, you have now a new folder called pcores, and within this folder there's a new folder uh, with the name of the IP core that we just implemented. So if you have done several IP cores, they will be listed or they will have separate directories in here. So if you go in here and go to HDL and VHDL, you have these two files. So the first one here, custom IP, is the top level file, and then we have the user logic file. So double click here, and we will open the XPS. And the first thing we need to do is to, um, to add our port, and it's done here. Um, and we can, uh, we can just call it bot in. And we need to set which type it is, so it's an input and the standard logic oh, standard logic vector and it's two bit long. So this is the first place we want to do, so now we have the port and then we need to do the mapping to our custom IP and it's done down here. It says map user ports below this line so here we are going to to map our user logic file and we are going to call it the same thing as before so bot in like this these are the changes we need to do to this file so we save it and we close it the next file we need to attend to is this user, user logic VHD file. And here we also need to add a port declaration first, which is the one that's mapped to the top one. And we need to implement our user logic and have a look at the example code and remove what we don't need in this file. First of all, let's start by opening it. So open and select user logic. So firstly, we go down here and we add our port here. And we may need to remember the name from uh, from before, so it's bot in. And then it's an input, standard logic vector. Like this. If you had if you have in, in your implementation you need signals, you can put these here, uh, just under architecture before the begin. Um, we don't, so what we are going to use a lot to do is now to have a look at all these ex all this example code of user logic. Um, we are not going to use this big chunk of the of code because it does write to our register. So the register that we, during the first guide, we selected we want to have one register. This one is called SLV underscore rec zero in here. And we, we would like to write to this. We don't like the bus to write to this register. Uh, so we, we are going to take it out. So we comment lines and take it out. And then we go to the end of this and implement our user logic. So And our usual logic is to, to take 
the push buttons and feed them into this register. So SLV underscore x0 and we are just making sh sure that the sizes on the buses are matching. So we go like this and put in so this is all we need to, to write in this file in order to have our push buttons uh, put into the register so that we can read from the micro place. So we're going to save this file and close it again. So now we need to update our MPD file. And this is a file containing the information of the input output ports on our entire custom IP package. And this file, if you go here for custom IP, you can find it here, you can view MPD file. And then here on the ports, you can see these are all the other ports that interfaces into the buses uh, and so on on the, on the design. And here we need to, to, well, to add our port to the external world. So we are going to write button. We have a direction of, of this uh, port, so it should be an input port, and it's a vector of two bits, like this. So this is what we need to put into to our um, MPD file. So we save it, and we close it. So now we're ready to insert the IP core and connect it to the buses in our design. However, before doing that, we go to project and then rescan repositories. And we do this to make sure that everything is updated uh, in, in the project with changes we did to the IP core. So now we can go insert this into the project and we do this by double clicking. And yes, I want to insert it. And all these settings, we are happy with those, so we say OK. And we want to have it targeted towards our microblade zero and add it to the buses, etc. So again, we are OK. So now our custom IP has been put in here. And the first thing to notice is that it's connected to the AXI4 light bus. Under ports, we need to do a few things. Um, so here you can see the custom IP is unfolded. We see that it's, uh, first of all, it's connected to the clock generator, which is okay. We can also see that it's connected to the AXI4 light bus, but our button in, or our but in um, port have not been connected to anything. So we need to do this, and as it is an external port, this is what we select here. And it gives us the name of our external port, which we are going to use when we are setting up our UCF file. So we are happy with this. We might make a copy of this name and then leave it as uh, as this. Under the address tab, you also see that the custom IP has been added and has been given the address space of uh, 64 uh, kilobytes. And again, we are fine with this. The last thing now we need to do is to update our UCF file. The UCF file is the file information of well, the file holding the information on the physical pins on our FPGA and how it's connected to the insides of the FPGA. So the UCF file can be found here. Double click and it will open. So here we need to add information on the two pins on the FPGA which are reading uh, the push buttons. Uh, so we're going here and, uh, and add this net and use this as the name that that we just uh, gave to our uh, custom IP here in bot in here this is the same name we're using in our uh, UCF file so that was why this was important to remember so we have this name and we need to connect this to our pins on our FPGA, and for my FPGA, the one is for uh, J4. We need to keep the 
bio standard. LVC was pretty free. And we also need to make sure that we are adding um, pull up resistors. So need to write this uh, for this pin. Uh, this is real yes. yes. So this is, is for one pin. So we need to make sure we only do this for, for one input since this uh, custom IP but in pin it's a bus pin so we need to make sure that we're only addressing it to one of the pins inside this bus and then we're going to do a copy of this line and insert it just below and we change this to a one and we of course then have to link it to another pin and on my device it's, it's five and the rest of uh, the file we, we maintain as it is so this is the, these are the changes we need to do to the UCF file so we close this and now we are actually um, at a state where our custom IP have been implemented so we need to run the DRC check to make sure that everything is okay and it returned uh, without any error so it's really nice um, so now we have done all the modifications to our custom IP um, so the functionality of the of the IP is now uh, in order the last thing we then need to do is to write some software to utilize this functionality and that uh, I will get back to in the next video uh, so have a look at this see you